The technology behind autonomous vehicles is truly amazing. Not only have we reached a point where computers are powerful enough to process all the different types of data needed to make self-driving cars possible, but we've also reached a point where machine learning means that autonomous cars are getting smarter and smarter every single day. I mean, you only have to look at the closed circuit demonstrations of the early Google self-driving car project, then compare it to the latest Waymo autonomous vehicles to see how far we've come in such a really short time. Tesla, of course, is another example. Its first generation autopilot system was a little rough around the edges and there were plenty of things it just couldn't do. Tesla's latest autopilot system, meanwhile, is streets ahead of that first generation system and is learning every day to become a better driver thanks to Tesla's always on internet cloud connectivity, data processing, and of course, the hundreds of thousands of Tesla cars now out in the wild reporting back their experiences to Tesla's mothership to help the AI learn and improve. But while autonomous vehicles promise a time in the future where we won't have to drive at all, where level five autonomy is the norm, and road fatalities are far lower than they once were, we often forget that, despite what some automakers may have you believe, a world with zero fatalities and zero collisions involving cars is very hard. And while Volvo and several other automakers are looking to a future where no passengers die in an accident involving one of their cars, there are plenty of other potential hazards out there that mean we'll never see zero accidents. Take pedestrians and cyclists, for example. They're pretty unpredictable, and while autonomous vehicles have learned how to predict everything from wild animal movements to pedestrian craziness, wobbling cyclists, and yes, even ladies in electric wheelchairs chasing birds, they can't prevent every single accident that will ever happen because they can't control external forces. Which is why Waymo has just received an approval for a patent filed two years ago that describes a system designed to deform a car's bumper, hood, or other body panels in the event that a pedestrian is hit. Rather than use the rigid steel or aluminium that most cars use, and yes, I said aluminium because I'm British, the patent describes a system where there are a series of cables or tension members underneath or embedded into the body panels of the car. These are kept under tension for everyday use, and they give the body panels the correct rigidity for normal driving. But when the car's sensor systems detect an impact, specifically a human or an animal hitting the car, those tension members are either slackened or cut to deform the body panel in question. The idea, of course, is that by deforming the body panels just enough in just the right way, the force of the impact is lessened and the person or animal that the car has hit is decelerated more gradually than they would be if they hit a solid, rigid body panel. And as I'm sure you will know, it's the sudden deceleration of our bodies in an accident that causes the most damage. That's why airbags exist. They slow down the deceleration and absorb some of the kinetic energy that our bodies have when the thing we're traveling in suddenly stops. At the moment, it's not clear if Google has used its patents on any of its vehicles. It doesn't appear to have done so. But it's also worth noting that the system described only has a certain degree of movement since the underhood area in most cars today is heavily packed and has very little space for a massive amount of deformation. That is, of course, all but electric cars like the Tesla Model S and Model X, which have very little under their bonnets. And if you think about it, modern electric car design, where the majority of the drivetrain and power components are under the floor, is a perfect place to put this kind of idea to the test. And of course, the latest pattern from Alphabet may never see the light of day. But I have to note here that the ideas go back nearly 100 years. Spend enough time perusing this patent application and you'll see the first patent referred by Alphabet dates from 1925 and involves a rather scary looking rope based bumper for an early automobile. I should note too that Alphabet's deforming car idea is also a lot better than covering the outside of a car with foam go check out the Spira three-wheeled EV if you don't believe me, and Alphabet's older idea of putting what amounted to giant flypaper on the bonnet of the car to literally catch pedestrians like flies. Yeah. Is there another solution? Is Alphabet's deformable body panel idea really a good one? Well, honestly, I'm not sure. It seems if we want an autonomous car world and a safer ride for passengers and other road users, we do need some way of ensuring that autonomous cars do everything they can to avoid collisions. But we also need to acknowledge that even the best computer systems can't predict everything yet.
And short of keeping all non-autonomous cars and other road users off the road, I think a belt and braces attitude to safety like this makes sense, don't you? That's it. As always, don't forget to like, comment and subscribe, hit that notification bell and click the Patreon link at the end of this video if you want to help me make more of these. Until next time, keep evolving!